Hey YouTubers, Jason here of Jason's 310. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. It's an expose on the Cessna 310 landing gear system. What I'm gonna do is first though, I'm gonna take you through the Beechcraft landing gear system, which you find on the Baron, because the Beechcraft system, in my opinion, and this is gonna piss some people off, I think is far superior. It's super simple, easy to rig, and it's just utterly a brilliant system. After I show you that, then I'm gonna show you the Cessna 310 gear system and how it works, and I'm gonna express my opinion on why I think it's designed the way it is. There's some caveats here. I'm not a mechanic, I'm just an aircraft owner trying to understand the systems on his airplane. Some details are approximate. I'm not a professional animator. My diagrams are not to scale. They're done in PowerPoint, and I've got, I believe, approximate measurements correct. And most importantly, the entire purpose of this video is to emphasize that gear rigging is critical for twin Cessna aircraft. Understanding the 310 landing gear system will help you realize why. And you should have your gear rigged. If you're a Cessna 310 owner and you do not know what I'm talking about, then you really, really need to go talk to your a and get your landing gear rigged. Another great resource for gear rigging is the Twin Cessna Flyer, which is the Type Club, the owner's group. Please join this if you're either a prospective owner or a Cessna 310 owner. If you're not a member and you're an owner, shame on you. They have a great video that I'm intending to uh, purchase as well because I want to watch it. It's called Rig It Right. It's how to rig the 310 gear system. My airplane, the gear was rigged just before I bought it. It's been two years. I'm hoping to have that done at this next annual. So let's begin with an overview of the Beechcraft landing gear system as found in the Barons and Bonanzas. The diagram in the lower center part of the slide shows the completed system. The gearbox is the heart of it. It's just behind the main spar on the center line of the aircraft, so between the pilot and the co-pilot. Emanating from that are three retract rods. On the bottom of the gearbox going forward is the nose gear retract rod, and then emanating out of the top, are the rods that pull the main gear up. The gearbox is in the upper left picture. You can see that it has a four-armed bell crank. There's also, you can see the landing gear motor attached in the upper left part of that diagram and on the upper right is the hand crank. The middle upper picture is one of the retract rods and notice it has a little bend in it. That way when it comes around on the bell crank, it doesn't interfere with the bell crank arm. And then if you look at the picture on the right, you can see the uh, main gear. And I'll point out the parts of this in a later slide. So this is the animation that you're going to see throughout this presentation. I just want to make a couple statements that it's not to scale, it's approximate. And there's two things that you're going to see on the Beechcraft animation. On the left-hand side, you're going to see a cartoon view from above, looking at the gearbox. And the gearbox, I'm showing it way bigger than it really is in the airplane. It's a fraction of that size. And then the view on the right is a view looking from in front of the airplane toward the back. So you're looking into the wing in, in uh, three dimensions, if you will. And so again, it's not scaled relative to the fuselage. I'm just trying to roughly show how the components fit relative to another. So again, here's what the gearbox looks like, which is in the fuselage, on the center line of the fuselage. Here's the retract rod on my diagram that is in red. And then what you're looking at here on the diagram is a representation of the landing gear leg out in the wing. So here's the main gear leg. The pivot point is the blue circle on the animation. The lower brace is as seen here in the picture. And the upper brace is as seen here. 
And note that the upper brace actually has a tab on it, which connects to the retract rod, which when the retract rod goes inboard toward the fuselage, it pulls up on that brace and breaks the lock and pulls the leg up. We'll see that in the animation. Again, another view just from the maintenance manuals. Here's the gearbox. Here's the retract rod. That connects down to this bell crank, which is sticking up of the upper, sticking up from the upper brace. So when the gearbox rotates, it pulls in on the retract rod. That pulls in on the bell crank, and of course that rotate rotates the upper uh, brace and and then begins to pull the gear up. So let's set the animation off and watch what happens. If you look in the fuselage, you'll see the bell crank is rotating counterclockwise 180 degrees and pulling in on the upper brace through the retract rod, which is in red. Now I'm going to stop talking and just play the animation progressively faster. Just have a look. So let's look at the gearbox and bell crank again. If you look in the upper left, you'll notice that the bell crank has two tabs with large diameter mounting holes, and then also two tabs at 90 degrees with smaller diameter holes for smaller diameter bolts. Those smaller diameter bolt holes are to attach the operating rods for the inner gear door. This is the gear door that starts closed and as you put the gear up it drops down to accept the wheel and then closes behind it. How it does that is it starts off at minus 90 degrees with the door closed and as the bell crank is rotating around counterclockwise it comes out to zero degrees which pushes the door open over centers and then comes back another 90 degrees continuing counterclockwise to bring that door back closed. So let's launch into the electromechanical gear retraction system on a twin Cessna. So this applies to the Cessna 310, and I believe it's a very similar, if not the same system, on a Cessna 340. The first point to note is the gearbox, just like in the Bonanza, is in the fuselage, just behind the main spar, but the difference is in the twin Cessna the gearbox is not in the center of the fuselage, it's off-center. The pilot's basically effectively sitting on the top of it. Here is the gearbox. Again, the next thing you'll note is unlike the Beechcraft system, which had four-arm bell crank, this only has two arms on the bell crank. And what you don't see is on the bottom, there's also another bell crank that operates the nose gear. Here is the mechanism that operates the inner gear door. So this is the door that opens and closes again to receive the main wheel. It's composed of an idler bell crank, a link, a rocker arm, and a lower link. Here's where this is installed in the airplane. The horizontal red arrow is pointing to an opening at the wing root where the retract rod comes out of the fuselage and into the wing from the gearbox. The large arrow, the vertical arrow, is pointing to where this mechanism mounts in the wheel well. Here's a diagram from the service manual, somewhat grainy, but I, I don't have the ability to jack my airplane up and open the 
gear door um, where you can see this mechanism. So this is the best I could find. The picture on the left shows this mechanism mounted in position. And you'll note that there's a door link actuator tube labeled. And you can see that attaches to another lever where it says attaching nut. And that lever starts almost in a vertical up position, kind of maybe 20 degrees up. And then it kind of bobs down and pushes the door link actuator down and opens the door and then bobs back up um, as the gear comes up. The right image on this uh, slide as well, again, shows this mechanism in detail as well. So take a minute to just look at the various red arrows and what they point to on the animation in the upper center part of the slide. Because in a minute, I'm going to animate this and I'm going to show you how you use a translational lateral movement of the rods, the retract rods, to actually create an over-center effect on this mechanism. So note the lateral translation of the idler arm, which is connected to the link, causes the link to push out on the rocker arm and causes the link to over-center. This in turn means that the rocker arm moves out, then reverses direction and comes back in. This is the motion we need to open the door and close it again as the gear retracts or extends. And we'll add the rest of the mechanism here in a minute, but I'll stop talking again and just let you see the animation. So let's add the rest of the mechanism for the inner gear door. In the lower left corner, you will see a diagram of the inner gear door. The inner gear door is labeled number 34. You will also see the door link tube, which the red arrow is pointing to. So on the animation, the orange horizontal line will be the gear door, which will show opening and closing here in a second. And then the white line is the door link tube, which will push the door down. Now move over to the lower right hand corner of the door actuator assembly, and you'll see 15 and 23. These are one unit, they rotate together. 15 is the actuator arm, which pushes down on the door link tube. And then 23 is a bell crank, which attaches to the curved lower link that you see in the lower right hand portion of that diagram and that's in turn attached to the rocker arm so remember we've already talked about how the rocker arm now will get pushed out over center and come back in so now we have a mechanism tied together to cause the door actuator assembly arm to come down push the door open and then come back up so let's look at the animation So let's review what we've learned so far about the 310 electromechanical gear system. Recall that the two differences for the gearbox between the Beechcraft and the Cessna is the Cessna gearbox is offset. It's not in the center line of the fuselage. It's actually more under the pilot. And also that it only has two bell crank arms on the top of it as opposed to four. Instead, we operate the inner gear door with the part labeled C. And now we'll talk about the main gear leg system. And I'll go into it in more detail in a bit, but the first thing you'll notice is that the drive rod that comes out of C, labeled number nine, that's the inner retract rod, that isn't in line with the mechanism that operates the main gear leg. There's something called a torque tube that translates that motion across and offsets it. And I'll tell you why here in a bit. So why is there a torque tube? If you think back for a minute, when we looked at the barren wing from the bottom, 
the landing gear attaches on the Baron to the main and rear spars. So there's just a giant cutout for the various doors on the bottom of the wing. The 310 is different. So I label the main spar and the rear spar here with the yellow dashed lines. And you can see the cutout on the underside of the wing. This is a wing from a wrecking yard turned upside down, obviously. You can see there's some structure behind the engine nacelle where there's another bulkhead where the main gear attaches. So there's this offset. So the, the main wheel, when it retracts, actually sits in here at an angle. The torque tube, where the torque tube is located, is where the blue dashed cylinder is. And that's actually behind that white bulkhead there inside the wing structure. The reason it's there is because the drive rod comes out of the fuselage where the big, thick, heavy red arrow is pointing and follows the path of the smaller arrow above it then that rotation is offset along the torque tube to the other small red arrow near where it's labeled wheel well. So we need the torque tube there to translate that motion and offset it to where the landing gear leg attaches to the wing. That's why it's there. So this is what the torque tube looks like. If you look at the picture on the left, it has various bell cranks attached to it and fittings to attach to the retract rods and to the uplock hooks. The picture on the right is a failed torque tube. How these usually fail is they develop a spiral crack and literally open up like a can of Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. There are upgraded torque tubes that you can buy from Cessna, and I believe now they're almost $10,000 each. So let's jump into the animation. So you know what you're looking at. I'm not going to show what's going on inside the fuselage with the gearbox like I did in the Beechcraft. I'm just going to show a view from the front. It's not exactly to scale. I believe it's close based on my measurements, but it's going to show the animation of the gear leg retracting. So here's the wheel, the strut gear leg, the lower side link, and the upper side link. And I'll stop talking. Let's just run the animation. So not a super exciting animation. At this point though, there's nothing to stop a side lobe from collapsing the main gear leg. If you turn off the taxiway too fast, bam, the gear collapses. So what we need is a way to keep the gear from collapsing due to side lobes. We need to be able to push down and lock these side braces so they won't kink. We also need a way to raise the landing gear because at this point, unlike the beach system, we don't have any kind of bell crank attached to the side brace to pull the gear up. So let's go back and review how this works. We have the 310 side brace lock link. This is the assembly labeled B or where the red arrow is pointing. This is what it looks like. So there's the upper bell crank and then the lower side brace lock link. The little cage on the top of the side brace lock link is where the micro switch goes to show the gears down. So that switch, when it makes contact, illuminates the green light. The bell crank, if you look on the diagram on the left where the red arrow is pointing, the bell crank attaches to the upper part of the gear leg. Going back and just reviewing real quick, we have the torque tube. This is what you'll see on the animation shortly. We have the outboard push-pull tube. Then we have the bell crank. So the outboard push-pull tube attaches to the bell crank. And then we have the side brace lock link, which on the animation will be this kind of gray color. Again, it's important to emphasize that the outboard push-pull tube, which is labeled 18 on the diagram on the left, attaches to the bell crank above the pivot point. So the green arrow is the pivot point for the bell crank. 
This whole system is tensioned by a spring, and this is a critical pre-flight check. The spring helps keep the bell crank and the lock link in alignment, and thus those in alignment keep the side braces from collapsing. So let's launch into the animation. I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to play the animation multiple times. Feel free to rewind the video, so to speak, and review the animation. So let's wrap it up, last few slides here. I'm just gonna talk about the design philosophy. The Cessna gear system is definitely more complex than the beach system. The picture in the upper right-hand corner is the underside of a barren wing. The retract rod has a straight shot from the fuselage out to the bell crank tab on the upper brace. So it just pulls the gear straight up with a straight run. The 310 system, if you look at the wing for the Cessna, the middle picture, um, there is something to take note of here. The red arrow is pointing to an area where there's a bulkhead, kind of a false spar, if you will, where the landing gear attaches to. My opinion, and it may be wrong, is the engine beam structure. The engine beam is highlighted by the orange arrow on the left. I think it introduces a lot of bending loads on the wing, and therefore Cessna had to beef up this area just aft of the engine beam with this extra structure. And what that means is obviously they had to have the torque tube system to offset the motion from the retract rod system over to where the landing gear leg attaches. That's my guess. It may be wrong. Comment below if you actually know why Cessna designed the system, why it did. So in summary, the 310 gear system has higher parts count. It's definitely more complex compared to the Baron. My guess is the engine beams required Cessna to introduce extra structure that prevented a quote-unquote quote, straight run of the retract rods. Therefore, there are more opportunities for slack in the system, which can cause a loss of downlock tension, and therefore it is critical to maintain the gear in rig. Rigging takes about 8 to 12 hours of labor, depending on one's familiarity with the system. That's it. That's the 310 gear exposed. I did this video, so I would understand it better. I hope this helps you too. Thanks a lot for watching. More videos soon.